Hey guys, welcome back to the 2021 Toyota Supra. I spent the week in this car, daily driving it, and uh, I wanted to tell you guys what that's been like in this video. First, let's walk you around this real quick. The only video we got a chance to do on this a couple weeks ago was a POV night drive, and uh, we didn't really get to see much of the car's interior in the daylight, or exterior for that matter. This yellow is absolutely stunning. I think this is probably the most attention-grabbing color you can get in the new Supra. I actually think it looks quite good. In person, it's, I'm always surprised at how small this car is. It's short, squat, wide. It really has striking proportions, and this is probably my favorite angle. So let's start you from the back here. One of my complaints is there's no trunk release on the outside of the vehicle. There's just nothing under there. You either have to hit the button on the driver's side door or on the key fob. Luckily though, there's actually a reasonable amount of space back here. It's not too bad. I fit about eight grocery bags back here the other day and there was room for a couple more. So pretty impressive and I appreciate that they gave us a matching yellow uh, snow scraper. That's nice, it's all in the details pretty nice opening though. You take this cover off and you can actually fit some larger items in this. Bonus points for practicality. Get your cool little GR logo back here. Now I've heard lots of discussion and everyone asks me about this, about these vents. Yes, they're all fake. Some people have said they can be made functional. And this is pretty much the only one that could probably be made functional. Uh, it would make no sense to make this functional. And of course, this is just, that's, that's, that's the door. It doesn't really lead anywhere. Um, yeah, you'd have to do some pretty major surgery, including removing the door seal uh, to make that functional. Let's look under the hood and show you what that looks like. So pay, pay close attention as to where this vent is here. We lift the hood up and it doesn't really lead anywhere. There's plastic, oh, and there's the, uh, the side wall of the engine bay. So again, not really a valid argument, but you know what? It looks cool, that's okay. We have a more powerful B58 inline six this year. It makes 382 horsepower. And uh, we actually got this dynoed and it made a little bit more. So BMW horsepower, um, a little bit underrated. They've added these chassis braces here I think they look a little cheap. It'd be nice to dress these up with some aftermarket carbon fiber bits. Otherwise though, a massive hood. This is just a huge piece of metal. Nice red brake calipers, Pilot Super Sports. A little bit of an older dated tire. The reason that it's running Pilot Super Sports instead of the, uh, the newer 4S is that when this car was developed, that's the tire they used to set up the suspension and everything else kind of was built for, those, for these tires and around those parameters. I'm sure you could upgrade to a newer Michelin tire and uh, have no problems. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this interior. I think it looks really good. Yes, everyone says the first thing you feel when you get into the Supra are all the BMW elements. But you live with it for a few days, all that stuff just kind of fades away and doesn't really matter anymore, and this just becomes a nice place to be. It's relatively simple to operate. There are not a lot of complicated locations for the most frequently used controls. Your cruise control is very easy to operate. Your light switches are all over here. Everything is accessible, easy to reach, it's a little bit tight and cramped in here, and uh, the front windsc windscreen view is a little bit narrow, but you get in here, you get settled, and as long as you're not super tall or super wide, it's a comfortable place to be. Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay works great. Um, there's a little wireless charging place here. The, uh, there's a very grippy rubber surface under your phone, but the Supra has so much acceleration, so much power, that very often your phone will be kicked back off the charging element. Uh, so you have to kind of just make a habit of pushing that back every time you floor it. 
we have a sport mode button. You can turn off stop start. There's your handbrake. Here's your your gear selector for your ZF eight speed automatic and hopefully someday a six speed manual. There is room for a third pedal down there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward in here. One complaint that I have, and you can see it kind of occurring right now, is that the the light meter that determines that automatically determines the uh, brightness of the gauge cluster and the screen is a little bit finicky. Sometimes these screens are easy to see in broad daylight, sometimes they're too dark. Minor gripe, but just something that I've noticed. The infotainment is responsive, super quick, easy to use. You can also go in and use it as a touch screen. Just classic BMW iDrive stuff, nothing different there. Uh, the JBL sound system is actually pretty decent too. We'll do a sound system test at the end of this video. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Let's go show you guys the reverse camera here. Again, too dark. I can't really see anything. Kind of a weird, weird fluke. All right, let's take this thing for a drive and uh, see what it's like on the road. I will say this car feels special. You walk up to it, you get in, you sit down. The driving position is just perfect. It's just right. It feels like you're in a sports car. I mentioned this in my last video. I don't particularly like the design of this steering wheel, especially in photos, but I love the way it feels. I have a kind of a gripe with BMW and that I think they make their steering wheels too thick and too chunky. And uh, this is just the perfect steering wheel feel. It's nice, it has kind of a, a pointed edge on the back. Not, not pointy, but like it comes to a point that's rounded. And it's really nice to grip. It just feels so good in hand. The steering wheel just comes right out to your chest. Your seat is low. You can see right out of the cockpit over the hood. It's a proper sports car driving position. This feels like a Porsche or a BRZ. It's just right. No complaints there. When you're just driving this around in normal mode, there's two driving modes. There's normal and sport, and you can change them with a press of this button right there. When you're just driving this around in normal mode, it feels like a fast sports car with a traditional automatic transmission. There really isn't much special to the driving feel. It's always hunting for the tallest gear. Um, it's more fuel economy oriented. Uh, the exhaust is muted. The ride quality is comfortable. But then once you press that sport mode button, everything wakes up. You get just a little bit more note from the exhaust. You get pops and crackles on the overrun. The CF8 speed becomes just a little bit sharper and that much more engaging. And of course, if you want full control, you can put it into manual mode and shift the gears yourself. You see the traction control light lighting up there. This has quite a lot of torque. It can spin the wheels pretty much on demand, and today it's a little bit chilly out, about 44 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's even more of the case today. I actually really like driving this car in manual mode because you have control over the gears. You can utilize that torque curve. Even at 3,000 RPM and fifth, there's a good amount of torque that comes through. Despite all that torque, traction control does a pretty nice job of keeping you safe. Uh, cold tires, not the best conditions for Pilot Super Sports, and uh, flat out through that corner, it kept us in a straight line without intervening so much that it shuts everything down. So it's a good traction control system that doesn't act too intrusively, but at the same time, it, uh, it lets you have a little bit of fun. The highlight of the Supra is definitely this inline six. It's a great engine. This B58 is a true hero, and uh, 
I mean, it's the reason why Toyota went with BMW for their Supra. This is the engine, and it's great. Let me tell you, this thing is just fantastic. I love the way it sounds, the power level. It's just so exciting. It sounds like a Supra. There's a little bit of an artificial, digital, I don't know, just undertone to everything, especially in sport mode. You put it into uh, regular or normal mode, and you can get the natural engine sound. You guys can hear the difference there. Compare that to sport mode. Just a little bit of uh, engine sound piped in probably through the speakers. But you know what? It's subtle and it's not too noticeable. I can live with it. I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, you just throw an exhaust on here, go into your sport mode settings, and you can go in and customize what you want. So you can have engine in normal mode and everything else in sport, and you won't get that engine note. So it's nice that you can isolate and select different settings for your damping, your steering, your transmission, your engine. All that stuff is programmable and customizable in typical BMW fashion. Aha, now our gauges are bright. Look at that. compliment I can pay the Supra is that it reminds me a little bit of the BMW 1M Coupe. There's this short wheelbase, high power, rotate on throttle thing that it has going on, and uh, it's a pleasure. On the highway, this thing is very, very good at highway cruising. Put into normal mode, it finds eighth gear sits around 2,000 RPM, and you get incredible fuel economy. I think Charlie did a video on this with a long, like a long distance fuel economy run on his channel Daily Motor, and he averaged something ridiculous like 34, 33 miles to the gallon, maybe even more. It was really impressive. And all week, driving this like a hoon, I've averaged 25 mpg in mixed driving. Some of those drives have been short distances, uh, cold starts, really um, not ideal for fuel economy and uh, we're still getting 25 mpg which is pretty impressive especially for a sports car like this that just shows the level of efficiency and precision that bmw has put into their engines it's interesting too because i've come from a subaru brz i drove that for six years and 60,000 miles and uh, i can feel a little bit of that toyota suspension tuning DNA in this car. There's a nimbleness and a short wheelbase agility to the Supra that feels very similar to the BRZ, especially on turn end. But what's different with the Supra is that this is so much more refined and comfortable and more grown up and isolated compared to the BRZ. This isn't necessarily that far off philosophically from the original Supra. The Supra was a grand tourer and this kind of still is. Uh, there's not necessarily a raw, visceral feeling to this new Supra. You do get a lot of isolation, uh, noise, wind, ride harshness, and that's nice for a daily driver sports car. You want something more hardcore, you want something more exciting, it exists in the market, but this, I think, makes a nice balance between a car that's exciting and engaging, that can thrill on occasion on your daily commute, and something that's not gonna beat you up and tire you out or make your spouse unhappy about riding in it. Yes, the suspension stiffens up quite a bit in sport mode, but in normal, it's perfectly livable.
let's put us into automatic here. We're in drive, and we'll just do a little zero to 60. We'll probably get a bunch of wheel spin, but that's okay. Part of the fun. We'll leave traction control on and see what happens. Guys, it's quick. Yeah, you get in a little bit of trouble with this. It's fun though. Makes you want to hear that inline six. It just gives you that extra level of enjoyment every time you get in and set off. And I will say, when I've been driving this this week, I've looked forward to my drives in it. It's exciting, it's fun. It's kind of cool to get into this and set off. And uh, I don't know, you just feel like you're in something special, which is nice. The tail does step out it's pretty controllable only about 15 20 degrees of steering angle and uh, you can correct most of the slides pretty easily or on the street I'm not going to be drifting this thing around but on a track it seems like there's a pretty good consistent breakaway limit to this too uh, if you guys check out Jackie Ding's videos you can see some of his early stuff before he did all the modifications and get a pretty good idea of what this super handles like at and beyond the limit because uh, if you know how he drives, he's always pretty much 11 tenths. Final thoughts. Well, all this car needs is a manual, and you've got a really nice sports car. But if you're someone who's going to buy a Supra and doesn't really want a manual, well then, here it is. Chances are a good portion of the buyers interested in this car really aren't going to want the manual transmission anyway. So here you go. You've got a great Supra. This 2021 offers just a little bit more power and it's a, it's a really nice overall package. I don't know anything for certain. None of us really do, but we could guess that Toyota will put a manual transmission in this car in the next year or two. Um, and I think that will really make a big difference in just, I don't know, I think it'll make it even more compelling to the enthusiast audience than it already is. And um, yeah, I think it's worth waiting for. If you're interested in a Supra, that'll make this a really nice car. The automatic transmission is great, but it does lack some of the precision and engagement factor that you would get from a DCT, for example, like one that's in the BMW M2. Um, there just isn't the snappiness and the immediacy to this eight-speed auto. It's a very good transmission. It's one of the best, but it's just it just doesn't excite as much as a DCT or a, or a, you know, a six-speed manual with a clutch would. And part of that is just the lack of control. You either always want to be in manual mode uh, give it a little bit of a you know a boot out of a corner and it downshifts a little bit too much you get too much power it's unpredictable how much how many gears it's going to downshift so you know you just you kind of want that predictability in a car like this and uh, the automatic takes some of that away we haven't been in sport mode this whole time now we're in sport mode Does sound good. It makes all the right noises. <laughs> that shove that you get on a second gear pull is addictive. This is either one of the best BMWs that you've driven in the last decade or it's just a very good sports car from Toyota. That's how I can sum up the Supra. Um, I do like this thing. It's, it's fun, it's nice, it's refined, it's livable. 
Uh, so far they've proven to be pretty stout on the track with a lot of abuse. This is definitely more of a street car than it is a hardcore race car or sports car, but that's okay. Sometimes people don't want to uh, you know, have their teeth jarred out on the way to work. This is a good daily driver, and I think that's probably the best way to sum up the Toyota Supra. All right, well, let's go in and do a sound system test. Listen to this JBL audio system and see what it's like. control these beautiful little slides in this thing. The power level is perfect, just enough to break away that rear end. Yeah, I like that, that's fun. JBL is actually pretty nice. It sounds good, no complaints. For a sports car, sometimes uh, sometimes the sound systems can be a little bit rough, but this feels, guys, this feels like a $50,000 car easily. 50 to 60 grand, I think, is the perfect price point for the Supra. It undercuts the Porsche. Yeah, you can get a Corvette for like 60 grand, but you can't get a Corvette for 60 grand. They're all being marked up. Uh, I haven't seen anything under 70. So, I don't know, this Supra is a pretty compelling buy. It is a little bit strange seeing the uh, stop start engage and a little bit embarrassing when you're at a stoplight with uh, the engine kicking on next to regular traffic. That's probably enough of that. You guys get an idea of what the sound system's like. It's pretty good, it works, and uh, you can actually hear it, unlike in the BRZ. All right, guys, well, those are my thoughts on the 2021 Supra. I am excited to see what Toyota does with this car, with its continued development. Um, recently, Toyota has done a really nice job with its sports cars and how they have progressed over their life cycle. Uh, the 8.6 was a really good example. And uh, I mean, we live in a reality now where sports cars can only exist with collaborative efforts like this. We're not in a position for a vehicle like this to be developed on its own and uh, you know have a business case. So. I'm pretty happy with this Supra. The more time I've spent with it, the less all the stuff people talk about really matters. Uh, I don't care that it's a BMW. It doesn't really feel as BMW in here as you would think, uh, despite the chimes and everything that comes on when you first get in. This is still a unique interior. It doesn't look like a 3 Series or something like that. There are a lot of differences throughout. 
Um, of course, the shifter's the same and the infotainment and all the a lot of the switch gear is the same, but I don't get BMW from this screaming in my face constantly. And uh, even if it does scream BMW to your face, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. Let me know some of yours in the comments. And feel free to ask me any questions if you have them. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. You want to see what I'm up to the rest of the time when I'm not posting videos to YouTube? Check out my Instagram at the Topher 2 The Topher was taken, so at the Topher 2 is uh, the next best thing. Thanks for watching. Take care.